Hi everyone, my name is Karen and I'm a multimedia artist. In this video, I'm super excited to take you down with me to explore these little non-toxic oil paints by Winsor & Newton. And by non-toxic, I don't mean that you can eat them. No, no, no. I just mean that you're free to use water as your medium instead of using those toxic solvents that you would use with traditional oil paints. So come with me. And since we're getting so close to Valentine's, I'm painting something in the Valentine's theme. So I hope you enjoy this one and you stick to the end so I can give you my thoughts and um, the things that I discovered while working with this medium. So stick around and let's get painting. The set that I have is a Winsor & Newton Artisan Water Mixable Oil Paints. It's a 20 count. They're real small, but I can already tell that they'll go a very long way. I'll be working with these canvas boards or canvas panels by Artiza, and they're five by seven. So I'll only be doing three paintings in this series. While I wait for my gesso to dry, I'm going to swatch in the oil and acrylic sheets all the colors that came with the set. And for that, I'll be using my glass palettes. I'll be using the clear one for now. I want to show you something. Here's where a lot of people panic and they think that they got a bad batch. But these paints are modified linseed oil based, which means that the oils tends to separate so you will see it when you're squeezing your paint out especially if they're new tubes you'll see a lot of that leakage come out but it's not a big deal you can either use it with your paints just um, mix it around and use that as your medium or you can just get a paper towel and wipe that right off and um, and just move on with your water as your medium but either way it's not a bad thing it doesn't change the color of the paint and um, it's totally normal So everything is dry to the touch now. My swatch of paints, as you can see, the paint dries a little bit shinier the thicker it is. And I cleaned up my palette. My canvas boards are completely dry. So now I can go ahead with my underpainting and I'll be doing an acrylic underpainting with this Quinacridone magenta and a titanium white.
Okay, so as promised, I said that I was going to be mentioning a few pointers that I found out with this paint. So really cool thing about it is like it's really pigmented. So no matter how much you dilute this with water, it has a really vibrant and really uh, opaque consistency. Or you can use it straight out of the tube. It's very creamy. It's very, it just glides right off. It's so, so nice. It's very buttery. So that's that with the paints themselves. Another useful tip that I can give you is to use just a glass. I used a glass from a picture frame, really. And I just put it, I just put some washi tape on the side it's just so it's not so sharp. For this one that I've been using for my um, oil paints, I put a piece of paper behind it, a toned paper. So this way, when I'm painting, I know the, the colors and the values and the tones. I can see them better versus when it's just clear and you can see the chaotic um, mess behind it or so. Or if it were stark white, per se. Another thing that I noticed too, it's very helpful to have your terry cloth rag because these paints are like traditional oils where it doesn't dry right away. So when you're trying to layer another paint on top of a, an existent uh, color that you have on your canvas, then it kind of tends to pick the one underneath up if you haven't let it dry yet. So for that reason, it's good to have this one so you can just drag your brush there and wipe it off and then go on with the, with the new color that you want to put on your canvas. Another thing is brushes. Brushes are very important. Um, I personally like using these ones a whole lot. I like them for my acrylics and um, it didn't disappoint for my oils. I really enjoyed using this one and I just dirtied this one too. <laughs> Good thing is that they're water mixable, so they're very, very easy to clean. So another thing is that these ones right here, this Princeton Select, 
are super easy to clean they're much easier to clean than these ones i'm not sure why but the bristles on these ones are a lot a lot more of a breeze to clean than these ones and these ones do tend to give you a little bit of trouble but for me a little bit of soap doesn't hurt and i just clean them up with that and just hang them upside down like this to dry so i think those were my my few little pointers that i found out during this medium i noticed that it will be helpful if i wanted to paint something with skin tones or if i wanted to paint something like a portrait like a pet portrait or something like that i would probably have to work in layers which means i would have to let the first layer dry at least to the touch so i can go on and pile on more layers on top other than that it was super fun the ones that i did i pretty much did a la prima so i worked with them one at a time all in one shot so there was no trying in between i hope this was helpful in some way <laughs>